inspiration. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercy that endure it forever. Patient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Patient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Patient of days, patient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are. You will never change. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Ancient of days, as old as you are. As old as you are, you remain the same. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. You are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Ale, 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 ale. You are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Hallelujah, ale, 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 Let's just worship him. Welcome, welcome, my sister. Welcome, hallelujah. Yeah, good morning, sir. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise, adoration. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Lord, we glorify you. Thank you. We worship your holy name. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. Yes, Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory. And no, 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 you are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory. And on and on. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. 
You are the Lord. You are the Lord. That's your name be glorified. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory. We give you glory. Yes, oh yes, and all. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are highly lifted up. Yes, Lord. There is no one like you. Hallelujah. You are highly lifted up, and there is no one like you. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We give you all the glory. You are highly lifted up this morning. Lord, we give you all. We exalt your holy name. We say you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the I am that I am, the faithful God. That's who you have, Father. We say thank you, Jesus. Oh God, we worship you. We magnify your name. Father, we say thank you, Lord Jesus. Magnify you. Father, glorify you. All the praises. All the Thank you, adoration. Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank, you, Lord. Thank you very much. Well. Thank you very much. And let's continue in the, in the spirit of worship. Uh, let's thank him for another opportunity to gather. You know, most of the time we take this for granted. We, we want to thank God for giving us opportunity to gather as, at his foot, at, at his feet this morning. We thank him for keeping us. We thank him for his word, his revelation of his presence in our life. We thank him for everything he's doing in, in our life. You know, we've been, it has been news of people, you know, that, that, that have passed, that didn't make it overnight. We had different kind of things, but yes. he's faithful. Yes. He's faithful in our life. Let us worship him. Let us thank him. Let us glorify him. Let's, let help, help. Let's pray, let's seek him this morning, let's glorify him, let's, let's honor him, oh Lord, this morning. But I thank you for who you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your mercies that are new every day. We want to continue to come to your presence and take this for granted. We pray, pray for the grace to be able to be able to receive you. Father, come and let your name be known. Let your kingdom come, Father. Let your prayers be shown that there is no one we can talk to. Say thank you. Lord, faithful to all you. everything that we go through. Lord, you speak by Baba, you. Show your mercy, show your, show, your show, your show your kindness in all the ways, Lord. You never sleep or slumber. Baba, Lord, you help us in every way, Lord. We exalt. But I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to your great name. We give you praise. Father, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Father, Thank you for another opportunity. Thank, Thank you, you for this, this day that you have made as we enter into your presence. Father, help us, O oh Lord, to seek you, to receive you, to accept Amen. your message, Amen. and for it to be manifested in the way we live and, 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 and we pursue life in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us to abide in you and remain in you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Once again, thank you, uh, Sister Bridget, Pastor, and everybody that's on the line. Uh, we thank God for another day. We thank Him for what He's done. His word is us. His word is always available for us through this platform and all the different platforms. It is by His love that we even have the platform. Uh, we thank Him. Uh, we thank uh, the pastor for making all this available. Um, today, uh, Wednesday, 20, 23rd of June, our uh, topic today it is very. It's a practical uh, message, you know, uh, even in Christendom, because more, most, one way or the other in our lives, we always separate our lives um, 
for their Christian lives, to our secular lives. But eventually, you know, as we continue to gather together, we should be able to actually, you know, notice that, you know, the way we seek God, you know, God is going to enable us to be able to actually, you know, to seek our purpose and all that things also, because if you feel that we're seeking God differently from the way we live our life, we're deceiving ourselves because what, you know, we, we, we won't be able to, if you seek, uh, uh, you seek money or finances or, uh, you know, different th- aspects of our lives with, uh, with vigor or we strive for it, we should also strive for the kingdom of God because that is the most important thing. Because he said, what, 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 will he, what, what, what will it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? So it is very important. And it's even, it transcends all other things. If we seek God with a vigor, if we strive for his kingdom, it will transcend other things. Because when you think about it, you, you know, if you say, okay, um, I, don't, you know, I just try to get by, you know, and try to fulfill all the righteousness, go to church. It, it also translates to other things in our life because you know, when we have that same attitude, you know, in other things that our relationship to, we will always try to get by just, you know, to make people feel, you know, what the real in-depth of love is not really revealed. Today, it is very practical, you know, you know, I, even I, like when I was reading it, I just felt like me, me too, I need totally, you know, and I need somebody to total me in this, in this uh, particular topic. Because in life, we need to strive for excellence. When you think about Christ, what Christ came and do, you know, he, he was, Christ was focused on his purpose. He didn't let any side distraction, you know, hold him down. You know, when we talk, look about, and uh, talk about Christ, even from before his ministry started, it, it wasn't always, you know, it, 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 there was nothing documented. It was documented that he, he abide, he always went to the temple, he read the scriptures, you know, and he taught people, you know, and that is out of the abundance of what was in his heart, you know, and because Christ is God, you know, so for us, so for us to think about that, that, and even there's a lot of scriptures that said, if we, I think uh, maybe it was last week or something, that, you know, that we were talking about Uzziah, and it was revealed that as long as he sought the Lord, as long as, you know, and he said he was taught by Zachariah to seek God, to study his word, to know his precepts. As long as he knew his ways and he sought the Lord, he was successful. And for this one, our topic today is a strive for excellence. And we know the story of Daniel that, you know, Daniel, you know, he, he, even though they were, he was a captive, he always, you know, you know, find time to seek God, to fellowship with God and to study the text and to study the scriptures and today at uh, our Bible reading is taken from Daniel 5 Daniel 5 14 but I'll read from 11 and I'm going to read the New Living Translation it said there's a man in your kingdom who has within him the spirit of the holy gods during Nebuchadnezzar's reign, this man was found to have insight and understanding and wisdom like that of the gods. Your predecessors of the king, your predecessors of the king Nebuchadnezzar made him chief over all the magic, magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and fortune tellers of Babylon. This man, Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar, has exceptional ability and is filled with divine knowledge and understanding. He can interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel, and he will tell you what the writing means. And Daniel, uh, in verse 13, said, So Daniel was brought in before the king. The king asked him, Are you Daniel, one of the exiles from exiles brought from Judah by my producers of King Nebuchadnezzar? I have heard that you have the spirit of the gods within you and that you are filled with insights, understanding, and wisdom. My wise men and enchanters have tried to read the words on the wall and tell me there are many, but they cannot do it. I am told that you can give interpretations and solve problems. If you can read these words and tell me the meaning, you'll be clothed in purple robes of royal honor, and you have golden chain placed around your neck, and you become the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Verse 17, this is where I end. Daniel answered the king, keep your gifts or give them to someone else. 
but I'll tell you what the right thing means. And if you read through it from that 11 to 17, we, we, you know, everything that was revealed there was like Daniel was filled with his Holy Spirit. It was filled with the Spirit of God, with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And that doesn't come just by him just staying in one place. It is by him seeking God through his words, knowing him. And, you know, it, it relates back to how, you know, we talked about yesterday about that, uh, maybe Joshua won it. That is the precept. How did Daniel come to be filled with, you know, the word of God? How, how did he come to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I, I was filled with all those knowledge that was, that, that even people knew about it, that now they could reveal and tell them, ah, that, Daniel could, would do this. Daniel would re- do this because he has this thing. He has that thing. He has the knowledge of this thing. Because he strived for excellence. That is the whole summation of all. He strived to know that. He strived to, he strived to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And for us too, that is our purpose, to strive to know the ways of, to know God's ways, to know his desires. So that, you know, when people see us, we don't even have to say things. They can see the light shine from us because we, you know, and I'm going to read some text before I begin. Like I said, you know, exactly what was written in that you know, Joshua 1 8. The, the, the eighth is that most important one. And he's saying, study this book of instruction, of, instruction continually, meditate on it day and night. So you'll be sure to obey what is written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all this. If you strive to know, the ways of God, his precepts, his statutes and commands. This is, and you know, you have to strive to know it. It's not just know a little part, then you use that little part. It's to be filled up with everything else. And God, like we know, like I said, you know, in that John 1, 1 that Pastor used, uh, you know, God's word is even God's because everything that is encompassing is in his word and it is in the word that he created the world. So also, I want to quickly read this text before I begin. I'll read uh, Colossians 3. Verse 17 says, and whatever you do, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to him, the God, the Father. So whatever we are doing, if we, if we say we are seeking the Lord, we should seek him, you know, with all our hearts. And also verse 22 says, slaves obey your earthly masters. In everything you do, try to please them at all times, not just when they are watching you, serve them sincerely because of your reverent fear for the Lord. So if you are seeking God, if you are doing something, everything you are, you have to strive to, to, to be to do it excellent, you know, do it as you're doing for God, not just uh, okay, let me just do it to get by or to do it for you know for purpose. Say walk willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for the people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward, and the master you're serving is Christ. So for us, we should strive to you know to be the best, to to to, to know God's ways and to you know to live based on his command. And also uh, Philippians 3. Uh, Philippians 3 from 10, I, I read, it says, I want to know Christ. This is Paul, you know, striving, you know, you know, not old, not, not just saying, I have small knowledge of who Christ is. This is his purpose. He said, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from death. I want to suffer with him sharing in his death and so that one way or another i will experience the resurrection from the dead i don't i don't mean to say that i have already achieved those things or that i have reached perfection but i press on he strive for it but i press on press on to possess the perfection which christ jesus first possessed me no dear brothers and sisters i have not achieved it but i focus on on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to, to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. This is our purpose for us to strive, not just be, to not, not just live in a mediocre life in his kingdom, like we should strive for, to, for, for, 
for, for, for the knowledge of who he is, because if we are if we come to the fullness of the knowledge of who he is and his love, just like our topic, uh, just like the uh, the sermon on Sunday, you know, if we know who he is, it is easy for us to be able to walk in line with his, uh, his will and purpose for us. But, you know, if you say message to the fathers, message to us, but who is giving the message, you know, we have to strive for excellence, to know him, you know, like what Paul wrote in that place. So let me just quickly read. Like I said, this is very practical. We can, you know, we can, we can, we can slot in in every areas of our life. And it's very, very beneficial. We should strive for excellence. He said, even though Daniel lived in captivity, he refused to settle for mediocrity. mediocrity. This brought him to the attention of the king of Babylon, who said, I have heard of you, that the spirit of God is in you, and that the light and understanding, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. What a resume, what a reputation. And what a rebuke to those who just want to get by. And this is, you know, you know, me, I'm included. That's the reason I said this could be related to everything. Because most of the time we come to, you know, the presence of God, we just want to go through the whole process over. So Sunday, let the scripture be done so I can move to the next thing. Let me just quickly pray to God, you know. But, and like I said, when, when the text that we read, I don't know what particular day, it's as Uzziah sought the Lord. He, he God made him prosperous. And that is why that, you know, Matthew 6, 33, we always read, like, seek God. That is, and how do we seek him? Through prayer, worship, and in the text, and, you know, trying to know his way so that we can actually be conformed to him. He said, that's a rebuke to those who want, just want to get by. The Bible says, do you see any truly competent workers? They will serve kings rather than for rather than for ordinary people in Proverbs 22, 29. The way you get notice and to get ahead in life, it is to study, to grow and sharpen your skill set. You know, the way we be we become Christ, just like in, in that John 15, 5 or John 15, 4, true 5. It says, if you, you know, without me, you cannot do anything. You have to abide in me. How do we abide in Christ? We have to know his ways. We have to know what he's telling us. Through the illumination of the Holy Spirit, revealing what God wants us to do in his words. Like, because God is, God is his word. You know, everything is all encompassing. Like I said, we have to study. Just like we read in Joshua 1, we have to study, we have to grow and sharpen our skill set. And what's our skill set? He said, we already have our weapon, and the weapon is the word of God to be able to, you know, to, 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 to know him and to use it as a weapon to defeat the enemy. It's a question. Do you have a mediocre attitude towards your work, your relationships, or your life in general? If so, consider the level of frustration you experience if people who served you had a that will do attitude. What if a waiter served you served served your food cold and and your your drink in a dirty glass? Do you think you complain? If so, imagine how people feel when you give them a shoddy workmanship, a care a could care less attitude. They say, excellent excellence is his own reward. Yes, you'll be rewarded for excellence, but, the, but your biggest reward will come from knowing you did your best. Aristotle said, we are, we are what we repeatedly do. And that is exactly, because if we continue to live a mediocre life, it will translate to every other thing that we live. If we come to God, you know, rush, who will always be rushing. That's one thing I notice about. You know, sometimes time, you know, you know time, it's never enough because you always, so if you don't find time, you will always be rushing. You will like everything you'll be rushing because that is what you have continually, you know, it's something you've repeatedly done throughout your life. We are what we are, we are what we repeat, repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. This is what we have to do. You know, we can't separate it, like I said. 
all these things. That's why I say you can slot this stripe with excellence in any facet of our life, you know. But if you want, if you don't want to be mediocre, we have to strive for it. It's an it's not an it's not an act, but but a habit. Observe the lives of the people who excel in their in fields, study their habits, and learn from them. Identify their character traits and seek to develop them. Bottom line, only when you have done your best can can you trust God to do the rest. So eventually, if you want to, you know, use this analogy that was used there. If you look at Paul and what he achieved, he, 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 you know, he strived to know God. He said he wanted to know, you know, to, to, to be conformed to Christ. So he didn't just settle for, you know, healing some people, you know, people using his handkerchief to do that. He didn't settle for that. He wanted to be conformed to Christ, the power that raised Christ up. So he didn't just settle. He didn't, after he became, after he started doing miracles, he strived for excellence, you know, for perfection in Christ, we can, which can only be found in Christ, in Jesus. Like in our uh, Hebrew talk too, that we always normally read. And that is our pattern. And most of most of us who settle, like me especially, I settle a lot, you know, just try to get by, you know, just try to know these things so I, I can speak about it. What about the manifestation of that word? And he's, the only way it is through abiding in Christ. That is how we strive for excellence. And I hope God will help us. So please, if you have contribution, like I said, this is very practical. Um, no matter how I try to actually make it to be, I hope um, some other people have um, contributions because I'm I'm willing to, to hear contributions today because me too, I want to learn to be able to strive for excellence. You know, some, we have to be consistent with what we do. You know, if we, you don't want to be mediocre. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Contributions, please, thank you. Th th thank you very much, Brian. Thank you. Um, you, you, what you said that uh, they're actually more touching to me, it's, um, uh, it, it's a real, um, we need this. We need to strive for excellence. Um, and one thing that I've come to to realize is that excellence um, is not an act, like the writer said, it's an habit. And um, what kind of habit do we actually love more? We have to love one and then don't love the other. Um, when we want to strive for excellence, and many of us are good at what we do, what we do on the on the on the world on our profession we are good at it we do do it very well um, but the excellence that we we need to actually focus more on uh, it's going to be the inward excellency how is our mind transcend with god how is our mind how excellent is our mindset with god because that's what actually people we see on the outside. Um, when it comes to the things that we do in the world, people expect that. They expect that. Because if you look at that story of Daniel, uh, there are magicians that could do anything that people expect that they're magician, they would do the magic. And people expect that. But with Daniel, there are a lot of things that people are doing that is not participating but yet it excel over everything else that they're doing. And uh, that's, that, is, that is very, 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 very deep. Um, the closeness, the, the more closer that we are with God, the spirit of excellence actually uh, uh, it, it shows in our action, it shows in our behavior and people see it. They see it. It's no longer an ordinary expectation. It's not a supernatural act of Holy Spirit that's operating in us. That's one thing that I want us to understand. That you said you said everything that was that's that that line up with this, even scripturally, scripturally, that we should seek God, we should seek the one that have the excellent spirit. Because nobody else have excellency, but him is the chief excellence here. 
He has everything that we need and we have not taken advantage of that, including myself, because it is the spirit that helps us to do better. It is the spirit that carry us even higher than those, those people that we look up to, that are CEO, that are CFO, that are COO, that are actually having money in the bank. You know, they, are, they depend on something. But if you depend on the higher spirit that is Holy Spirit, you will excel more than them. You know, there's some people that look at you and they just look at you. I remember uh, when I was in Bible college in Nigeria, um, uh, I think it was my, my, my second year, um, the redeemed camp was just started then. It's probably about seven houses in the redeemed camp then. And when we were, we were, our, our, we were there, but the thing that we noticed, it was one of our, my student colleague that find out and he's been studying this, you know that you always leave like 9 p.m. He will walk around the whole entire camp and he will go deep praying around the whole entire camp. He's been studying him. We didn't know, we will sleep at nine. You know, student, we've walked all day all night, but this guy followed him and he woke all us up. Let's plan to start doing what daddy does every night, praying with him. You know, by the time we do it the first day, we do it the second day, we do it the third day, the fourth day, we are Africa, we can do it. Why? Because we have not got to that level of commitment. We have not got to that level of understanding what was each purpose of what he was doing. Many of us are chasing other people's purpose and looking at other people's excellence to gauge our own excellency. Instead of us to look at what God asks for us on our life so that we can now seek face of God to become excellent in what he has called us to do. We change so many things in life. We want to proficient in a lot of things that God has not called us to do. But what God has actually called us to do, they are neglect because we are not allowing the one that give the spirit of excellence to lead us in where we need to go. We are still student. He is building an army. He is building a city. He is building a country. We are students that still learning and we want to start chasing him to be like him instead of us to focus on what is important and seek the face of God to be where we need to be so we can be proficient in where we are. If we continue to work with him from nine until five o'clock in the morning that he does, are we gonna be able to survive the classroom? No, we are not. We are not gonna be able to be functioning the way we need to function the next day. No, we will not. But he has outgrown all of those. Now it's in this prime of Walking with God, God appointed time for him. It was operating in it. But we saw him and we think, oh, we desire him emotionally. We use our five senses. Ah, we want to be like him. We want to start doing things the way he does things. We want to start praying from 9 a.m. until until 9 p.m. until 5 a.m. I just walk around the old place. We want to do the same thing, but we have not looked at ourselves. How are you measuring up with your purpose? How are you measuring up with God? How are you measuring up with the little that he has committed into your hand? Find that purpose first. Then start from where he has given it to you. Accept it. Admit it. Take it in. Digest it. And now seek his face on how to develop it. That's how excellency comes from. We have not been able to define that's what we need to do to become excellent. Many of us are chasing other things and we find ourselves keep falling down. We say, ah, I'm not doing it right. Or they say, I didn't do it right. Or they say, oh, the, oh this is pro the problem we continue to, or continue to happen because you are not in your lane. Let's go back to the drawing board and ask God, why am I here? Since I know where I am here, God help me to do the best at why you brought me here. That's how we start. That's how we start. Then, then you start growing little by little. Excellent spirits start working with you. When Jesus Christ realized his purpose, do you know he never did, he never leave God alone? Everything he does, he has to do with God. When Paul realized his purpose, everything he does, he has to do according to the Holy Spirit. 
when you realize your purpose, you will continue to do the same thing according to what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. Then you will be consistent with it. You will be submissive to it. Then you'll be able to go about it. Stop looking all over the place. What you have is in you, the Holy Spirit. All you need to do is ask him, what I need to do? Why am I here? Which way should I start going? And help me to continue to do what I need to do right. May God help us all in the mighty name of Jesus. I haven't gotten there yet. That I'm still praying that God help me. The little that you've helped me, that you've put in my hand, help me to be consistent. Help me to be, to, be, to, to be punctual. Help me to do it to your glory. Give me the ability to give him my 100%. So I will not be lacking anything when there is a need. That is what excellency is all about. We are striving for it. But find your purpose so you can excel in it. And God will help us in Jesus' name. You did very well, Brian. You did, you did very well. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, like what Pastor has just revealed to us is for us to seek Christ, to seek the Holy Spirit. You know, like he said, like uh, it was revealed to us this morning. Daniel was full of that spirit, and he, that spirit just then come and stayed on him. It, you know, like I said, the text we keep reading about Paul. There were a lot of people too that were filled with that received the Spirit of God, but you know, Paul tried. Uh, so we should strive for excellence. We shouldn't just say, okay, now since now we are, we are changed, now we receive a spirit, then we should just, you know, continue to get by. We should strive for excellence in his kingdom. And like you said, the spirit of excellence is in Christ Jesus. So for us, we should seek, you know. And, you know, Christ revealed many times to all those people, like, you know, if, you know, you know we should be fruitful. And he's in striving for excellence that we are changed and we now become, we now be, we, we now, to, we will not bear fruit, you know, a fruit of the spirit, fruit of witnessing, you know, to, to reveal who God is, his glory. But if we don't strive for excellence, we will not be able to reveal who God is and we will not be able to bear fruit worthy of who he is, you know. So for us, we have to strive for excellence. And like I said, every this it translate it, it transcends to every other areas of our life with the same kind of vigor and attitude. If you know, if we live our life without you know seeking our purpose and living you know living up to it, like I said, most of the time you know we make different excuses, and it translates to every other thing because, like I said, as long as you know. Daniel, you know, he didn't defile himself. He sought God and he, you know, studied, you know, and he was filled with the spirit of God. And from there, people can see, you know, they can talk about it. You know, most of the times, you know, what can people say about us? Are we great? You know, are we doing great things? But it is what we, we repeatedly do or, or what we can't, continuously do or consistently do that is what people are going to see and they will see God in us if we consistently seek and abide in him and I hope God will help us like I said you know we uh, you know you know I think in, Re in Revelation uh, Christ was you know talking about the churches about their lukewarmness uh, and he wanted for lukewarmness and mediocrity in his kingdom God doesn't want us to be mediocre. He wants us to su succeed. That is why he's telling us to continually seek him, to know his ways so that he can guide us and lead us in the way forward. Thank you, Pastor. Do we have any other contribution? Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for uh, today. Uh, Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Sam. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll read this passage as Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. It says, um, Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Now, why do I read that part? Uh, it's because... There are certain things that we need to do while we are here on it. 
and part of it is to do exploit. And you don't do exploit when you are doing just the BRS minimum. So I'm required to do just this and that's just what I'm going to do. No excellence in that. You know, Pastor made mention of uh, something earlier and that reminded me of a, you know, list of points that I sent to my wife on the 21st. Yeah. That's about two days ago. And, you know, I, I just woke up in the middle of the night and one thing came to mind and it was, you know, my land of prosperity will not be left uncultivated. And what does that mean? It means that God has given us visions. He has given us purpose. The question is, are we working in it? Or what we do is we abandon it and we follow others because we feel like what others are doing are more important or better than what we are doing. It could be in career. There are people that have joined from one career to another, to another, to another, you know, seeking, you know, what they believe we give them probably what they needed. But the question is, what is God asking us to do? You know, without direction, people lose their way. And that's just the way it is. I'm talking about excellence. Without self-control, without self-discipline, there is no excellence because you have to stay consistent. We have to stay consistent in that which we are doing. Sometimes we might experience roadblocks, which could be something that we all call failure. And I wrote on my page, I said, failure in the true sense of it is not failure. It's just one of the tools that solidify and fortify the, 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 the foundation of success. Because we'll discover that when a child is growing, I'm listening to a particular um, message this morning. I think this thing is just connecting all dots together, letting me know that I'm actually doing what I'm supposed to be doing at this time because I was scrolling through to today and I just found something talking about self, you know, um, discipline. And it was saying that, do you know that you have been self-disciplined even when you are very little? Do you know how many times you fall when you're trying to stand while you're a baby? Do you know how many times you fail when you are trying to walk? Do you know how many times you blab when you're trying to talk? But today you can talk, you can walk, you can stand, you can run. You know, we get obsessive about wanting to walk. We get obsessive about wanting to talk. But the question is, when did we get to a point where we lose focus? When did we get to a point where even the things of God we do, we just do the barest minimum. No commitment anymore, no self-discipline anymore, no self-control anymore. Any little challenge we face, we believe, oh, this is not the way. And we take another route. And we keep jumping, jumping, jumping like that. And at the end of the day, we begin to ask ourselves, who are we? Where are we going? Someone wrote in the comment box today and said, but the person wrote it a long time ago, but I read it this morning. And like, the person said, my goal is to find my goal. My goal in life is to find my goal. What is your goal? What is my goal? If you have found it, if I have found it, are we walking in it? Or we left it, we are doing something else. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. It is very important we find our purpose. And like that's one of the things that, you know, Pastor and it was also re revealed in the text we read about being filled with the spirits, getting, you know, you know, yielding to it so that they can lead us in a part of life. You know, in a part of life, eternal life is it's a part of excellence in God. Because like I said, our purpose when we were created was to you know, to, to do great things, to dominate, you know, to tend to what God has given us, to strive for excellence, not just stay medi in mediocrity. And if we, like, like you said, sir, if you don't find a purpose, 
will just be jumping from one thing or the other. You know, there won't be any consistency. And we need to be consistent in his presence to seek to know him, to know his ways, you know, and to walk in line with that, with his will and purpose for us. Thank you. Do we have any other contribution? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, man. Uh, it has been so great, all the contribution. I'm really so blessed. <laughs> but as I'm just added a Maggi, you know, in Nigeria, there is something we call Maggi to make it sweeter. Uh, I just want to bless God for all the contribution. You know, there is something that um, was quickened to me, you know, when Brian was uh, discussing, something came to me uh, in uh, Proverb 18, 16. He said, a man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. So now, like what we, we have been discussed already, that for us to be able to identify the gift, because the Bible says for, to, for every man is given a measure of great gift, grace to function. So one, when we have been able to identify the area that the Lord wants us to function, then what do we do with it? Like pastor was talking about the father, you don't have to be chasing after other people what God has given to them. Maybe they are excelling, you, you feel, oh, maybe I should go along. No, it is the same measurement. Remember when the Lord gave gifts to pay, uh, those three uh, classes of people, he gave five, he gave two, he gave one. At the end of the day, it was the same thing that the Lord, the same uh, inheritance that he gave to them, those two that traded and the other one that said, oh, I know you are a hard man. I know I didn't, I didn't use it, I buried it. So the question is, when we are able to identify the area God wants us to portion, then we have to really spend time. It involves sacrifice. Your time will be required. The number of sleep, hour you sleep, that would have, the scientists say we will sleep up to eight hours, seven hours. It, you are not going to have it. You must be ready to pay the price to excel in that gift that God has given to you. Your community, when you meet business, when we meet business with God, God will also meet business with us. That is the truth. If we look at the early disciples, they spent their life for what they believe. They spent their life. They did not withhold anything. So that's what makes the difference. Is for us to ask God for help. Like in this part of the world, I always say, and eat and pray for the body, praying for the house, this uh, house. I always ask God, Father, help your people. Because I put myself into your position where you are doing so many hours, you are doing this, you are doing this work, you are doing that, to be able to still function in your gift, in your calling. It really demands so much. And I keep praying every day, Father, help your people, grant strength, grant grace, strengthen them with might in their inner mind to be able to stand and fulfill their ministry. God, as much as that is, God is not going to excuse us. So what we need to do is to ask God for grace. You'll find that even if it is two hours you sleep, you will be so refreshed in his presence because grace is now speaking for you, speaking for me. So that is what, brethren, I think we should really believe God for strength. We should believe God for grace. We should believe God for help to be able to excel in that which he has committed unto us. If you have not been able to identify the area that God wants you to pursue, you can ask. But if God has revealed it to you, brethren, it's not going to just fall on your lap. No. This songwriter does it, say, just enough is not enough. Just half or do is not enough. So the Bible says you have to work it out. Make your calling and relationship sure 
you spend time. If it is intercessory prayer, if it is to minister, that's why the uh, 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 first Corinthians 12, whatever God has many do giving to you, wait on your ministry. How do you wait, wait on your ministry? It's commitment. We have to be committed to it. We have to take it as a career, as a vocation, and make it make sure that we are go asking God for help at each stage. Your time is involved. You know, your energy is involved. Your money, even you your finances sometimes is involved. So this is the word I think that brethren that will continue to ask God for grace and strength and the supply of his spirit is not easy, brethren, it's not. We have read it, but some writers say we have a, ro- a race to run. We have victory to be won. He say, give me power every hour to, 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 to do that which you have given to me. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we, we, you know, to discover our purpose and as to true seeking God, seeking the Holy Spirit to reveal the mind of God to us and also seeking a strength to be able to, to be functional and to strive to achieve it. Just like Paul, when Paul, you know, discovered his purpose, he, he, didn't, he didn't just settle. He continued he continually strives and oh God will help us. If we don't, do we still have any contribution? If we don't have any contribution, I'll hand over to the pastor. Do we still have anybody who wants to? Hallelujah. Thank, th- thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna steal from uh, Brad Sam's uh, statement. Uh, the guy that say, my purpose is to find my purpose and I'm going to continue to look for my purpose until I find my purpose. Then <laughs> it will be, it will be uh, if it's his goal in life is to find his purpose um, and he hasn't find it now. I pray that the Lord God Almighty will open his eye of understanding to see where he's standing or seek the face of the Holy Spirit. Just like uh, many people nowadays that think they're, they're chasing after looking for their purpose. Uh, let me give you good news. And uh, the bad news is that uh, we are all sinner. Uh, if you're chasing purpose without Christ, you don't have a purpose. Let's make that clear. The only way you can find your purpose is by accepting Jesus Christ into your heart. Uh, just confess that, Lord, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Because without Christ, we have no purpose. Nobody can function and remain like alive for eternity without Christ. Because without Christ, we are nothing. Uh, we cannot get to the Father without Him. And uh, the world is actually condemned because of sin. And uh, if you're looking for your purpose, your purpose is in Christ. If you're looking for your purpose, your purpose is in God. And through Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can find that purpose. Confess your sin. Ask God to come into your heart. Tell him to be the Lord and Savior of your heart, of your life. Confess him as your Lord and personal Savior of your life. Then if you can do that, then just say, live in my life and submit my life to you. Then welcome to the kingdom. Look for a church around you. Ask them. You just get born again. Just receive Christ. You want to know how to walk in your new purpose, your new purpose in life is that you live here. And after living here, there is a judgment. After judgment, you will meet with him. And you don't want to meet with him when you have not accepted him. It is better to accept him as your Lord and Savior than when you meet with him, he will welcome you to say, yes, you are part of this kingdom. I mean, the Lord help us. If you can find a church around you, look for rccg.org, go there. And uh, just tell the pastor, you want to start walking in the new purpose of your life which is Christ. And for the rest of us, we know our purpose is in God. What will it gain the, world, the man that gained the whole world and lose his soul? Our purpose is in Christ. So let's pray that Holy Spirit, help me to walk in my purpose. Help me to walk in my purpose that I will not be just be national attitude. I won't have this national attitude. I have this mediocre mindset to say, yes, I'll get to it when I get to it. Or it will be all right when I get to it. You know, no, it will not be all right because what you work with God, God will line you up with what he wants you to do. And that when he lines you up, trust me, 
kings will look at you. You will sit among the kings. You will sit in the place of higher places when you're walking with God. God is the one that will sort you out. They will come and look for you just like they come and look for Daniel. Even though there are so many prestigious magicians in that land that time, they said, no, even the magician are the one recommending him. Why? Because he remained in Christ. Because he knew his purpose. It's not to defile the temple of God. It's not to defile his body. Because he carried the king of kings in him because he carried the lord of lords in him because he knows the god that he served do you know the god that you serve if you know him ask him today that holy spirit come to your fullness of ability in my life that i will continue to walk in that thing which you have given me i will not run other people's race but i will run my race i will not look at other people to do what you ask me to do but i will do what you ask me to do in at the, at the time that you ask me i will not live a life that will just only depends uh, on, on, on other people, but my dependence will be upon you, that it's only you and uh, you will uphold me with your right hand of righteousness, that I will not fall out of your grace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. The rest of the day is in your hand. This evening Bible study is in your hand. Take absolute control in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the name of the Father be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The rest of the day, Lord God Almighty, guide our step, direct our path, and at the end of the day we will have all the focus to glorify your holy name in jesus mighty name we are prayed amen 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 thank you very much brio thank you glory be to god thank you everybody for joining god bless you just remember you know we all say i want i'm looking for my purpose i'm looking for my purpose but our purpose is in christ it's in christ if we can submit to him he has given us the measure the gift that we need according to our faith, to walk in that purpose. Everything that we are running around for, they are just a gift, a jara for us. The main purpose why we are here is to stand and shine the light of Christ in our life for others so they can see. Daniel did that. He stood by God and he shined his light. And people that are in darkness, they saw the light of God in him. Why not go out there and shine your light, the light of Christ in you, so people can see it and they can come to Christ through you. May God give us grace. May he shine his face upon us and grant us peace all around. Let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I am the one the Lord has blessed, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining. God bless you, Brian. Thank you for a wonderful job today. Cover Thank you, sir. Jesus, may you find favor in all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.